changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration. It's Friend Friday, and today we have brought back Natasha Stoinoff. I think it's your third time on this podcast, right, Natasha? I think it's third time. Second time as friend, third time as journalist. All right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) So Natasha, you might have heard of her. She is a longtime journalist and author. She has 12 books that she's written. She was a longtime reporter for People Magazine and Time Magazine. She's worked on Chicken Soup for the Soul books with me. She was my writing coach for my Simply Happy book. She was a co-author with me of our Hope and Miracles book. And she recently won something called the Henry Luce Award. I just found out about this. What did you win this award for? Do you remember who he is, by the way? Uh, yeah, he, the founder like, of Time. Right. Time, Sports Illustrated, yeah. Life Magazine. The award was for a story I wrote last year in People Magazine um, on Donald Trump. And uh, it won Best Multimedia Story of the Year. Well, congratulations. Yay. That's really great. I got a trophy and everything, and it's the head of Henry Luce. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure you were... Quite a striking fellow. <laughs> I'm sure you really wanted that. <laughs> but I know as a journalist, that's an amazing honor. So Thank you. I knew you were fabulous. And I know that you are working on a new series for People magazine, right? And yes. what is it about? It's, or it's tentatively titled Women Who Speak Out or Women Speaking Out. And I'm going to profile six different women who have, against all odds and at great risk, have spoken out about sexual harassment or sexual assault and in the process inspired other women to also speak out about it. Um, and it's, it's been quite an emotional, enlightening experience so far. The series premieres end of May and uh, will go to the end of the year. And who knows, maybe we'll keep it going because the, the crazy thing about this topic is when I started researching it, you, you you think that we have made progress in this area, and it's shocking to see how much sexual harassment there still is and sexual assault all over the place, and women are not being helped or talking about it. Well, I'm glad that you are talking about it because you are the face of that whole part of journalism, and I'm really happy to see you're continuing to do work in that area. I don't know if you know that we have a new journalism company that we bought last year. It's called A Plus. Mm. It's a positive journalism website. And it's really great. It is very empowering also. And a lot of the stories on A Plus.com are about people doing the right thing, about kindness, compassion. It's very in keeping with Chicken Soup for the Soul's view of the world. And we did a book in February called Random Acts of Kindness that's been doing really well. What's been happening recently is that all of the things that Chicken Soup for the Soul has always always stood for, like kindness, compassion, tolerance, respecting people's differences, looking at the value of immigrants, etc. All of that, which I used to think were just core American values, now are viewed as somewhat political, mm-hmm. which is shocking to me. But that's what we stand for. And we have this new positive journalism website that stands for the same things. So is it news stories that are about positive, healthy topics? Yes, it is. A, it is a serious journalism website. It's mostly text, but there's also videos mixed in. And it's it's actually really stylish and fun to look at. It was started by Ashton Kutcher and two other guys. And uh, we bought it last year and we now own it with Ashton. And so we work closely with him and he has a very good way of looking at journalism, you know, this positive journalism. And we do a lot of good with aplus.com and our readership and viewership has been absolutely soaring. So we're really excited about that. And I, I wanted to tell you because you're such a longtime journalist and I know that being a journalist these days can be a little demoralizing. And so I wanted you to know, at least we have something good going on. I'm so happy as a journalist and as a reader, because we need to read some uh, stories that are uplifting. And I love the idea of taking your chicken soup idea and putting it into journalism. 
Well, and they were already there. I mean, we were a perfect match already mm-hmm. in the way we viewed the world so positively where we want to give people material to watch and material to read that empowers them and shows them they already have the tools within them to make their lives better and that they can reach out and form relationships and human connections and do good in the world. That's so great. Because in a way, I think it's unnatural for us to hear so much bad news every day, every minute of every day, as we do now. I I wanted to talk to you about that, the state of journalism today. And what is it like to be a journalist in this environment? Oh, boy. You know, it's funny. I saw Woodward and Bernstein on Uh, and we know who they are, on TV last week, um, talking about how important truth is in journalism today. And I'm so dismayed and proud of journalists today, this last year especially, that they don't give up seeking the truth and asking the hard questions. As a matter of fact, they've they've doubled down. Is that the right phrase? Um, And persist. They do. I've noticed that. They are very persistent because they've been trained to write articles that are accurate and that tell the truth. And they've been trained to research and to seek out the truth. And that's what their readers want. I know that I finally subscribed to the New York Times, you know, the online edition, because I felt like I just needed to know. And I, I heard that the New York Times digital subscribership soared yes. in, say, the past half year or so. I think quadrupled or something. Yeah, yeah it's been great. And I'm, I'm one of them. I do want to get back to talking about journalism, but we have a sponsor now for the podcast. We finally took on a sponsor that I really like. It's called Great Courses. Mm-hmm. And so I want to talk about them for a minute because you know that I am such a total grammar geek. And You can imagine how excited I was when the great courses came to me and said that I could watch any lecture series they had. And I went through the whole list looking and they wanted me to look at meditation. I'm like, no, I want to watch English grammar (laughs) boot camp. You're perfect. Right. So there's 24 lectures. They're each about half an hour. And I've been skipping around and Mm -hmm. watching the ones that interest me. It's been so much fun and One thing I've learned is I have to be more open-minded and accept that English is a changing language and I have to be less snutty. So my father, the English teacher, would be right with you. Yeah, because I'm a little snutty. Right, because now apparently you can end a a sentence with a preposition. And, of course, that was one of the the big no-nos. I've given that up because I know since Chicken Soup for the Soul does storytelling, that that's how people talk. And I try to create, I try to write our stories the way that people actually talk because our stories are storytelling just committed to paper. But the cool thing about The Great Courses is you can stream these lectures on any of your devices and you can even download them and you can watch them when you don't have internet access. And right now, my listeners can watch The Great Courses Plus for free for a whole month. They just have to go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash soup. They'll get one month free. So it's pretty cool. Well, the great courses are incredible. I used to listen to them all the time when I had to do my long walks in Central Park. I think I, I'm actually earned a degree in something. Oh, well, that's wonderful. That's really great. So let's go back to talking about journalism now. And I know that you've been taking a lot of time off from journalism to write books, but it sounds like all of a sudden you're getting back into journalism again. Is, is that really what's happening? Well, you know, the thing about books, and I love writing books, is that they take so long and they're so involved. And I think part of me missed a little bit of the immediacy of interviewing somebody and and, and sending the paper the next day or in the magazine the next week. So I am starting to sort of do a combination and starting to, um, and I'm finishing a screenplay too that um, we might be seeing on the screen someday soon, very soon. But yes, I'm doing a little bit more journalism and getting a little bit back into entertainment and interviewing some um, big name celebrities, which is something I've always loved because I'm such a film lover. So I'd like to so I'd like to vary it. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear you're getting back into journalism again because uh, it will be fun to read your articles. <laughs> so I guess I'll have to subscribe to People Magazine. I guess you will. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> is it all within the Time family? Is that where you're working? I'm a free agent, so I can really go anywhere. Um, that's what I love about being freelance. So... Who knows? Who knows? But my loyalty, I have much loyalty to my to People Magazine and my family at Time Inc. Very much. So once you were a Chicken Soup for the Soul author, what was the impact of that? I'm just curious, after you 
wrote so many other books and you were so well known. Did people talk to you about the fact that all of a sudden your name was appearing on the cover of Chicken Soup for the Soul books? Um, yes, they did. And, and everyone asked me how they can get their stories in the books. And everyone asked, everyone started telling me their stories. And everyone started telling me their ideas for chicken soup books, which I'm sure you've been getting for years and years and years. Oh, yeah. I get all kinds of crazy ones. Right, Like right. chicken soup for the illiterate soul. <laughs> and I have to explain we're running a business here. <laughs> Wait a minute. That could really sell right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, and uh, of course... I, I try to advise them, but um, it, it's great. it was great being part of those books, especially our last book, uh, Cur- Our Curvy and Confident. Yeah, I was going to talk to you about that because that was really inspiring. And we did talk about it a lot on the podcast, but for people who don't know about it, it was a book that told women that they're okay the way that they are because nobody looks like those people in the magazines. Even the people you see in the magazines don't look like the people in the magazines. Mm-hmm. And women are supposed to have a little more meat on their bodies in order to be healthy. And Chicken Soup for the Soul, Curvy and Confident, you and I did that with supermodel Emmy, who you brought into the Chicken Soup for the Soul fold because she's been a longtime friend of yours. And Mm -hmm. it was a great book because I think that we really helped women to be willing to put a bathing suit on again and to wear that slinky dress to the family wedding, et cetera. Totally. And I think we helped us. I think you mean, Emmy, we were all impact, had, you know, the, the, the stories had such impact on us. I know just reading them all, thousands in like a three week period, um, left me like, just whatever lesson you're going to learn. I learned it tenfold because I had all these women's voices in my mind and all their journeys and stories. And it was amazing. Yeah. The thing that got to me the most was the bathing suit stories. I know. Because I know these women who were really, really skinny and perfect and they won't wear a bathing suit in front of everybody. And meanwhile, I look in the mirror and I'm like, how did my mother's legs get attached to my body? (laughs) So (laughs) if bathing suits had skirts that went down to the knees, I'd be perfect. But you can still get those in some countries. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I'm not going there. Actually, no, that's Online, funny. you can get them online. I did wear, I, I wore the bathing suit in one of those countries because I went to Oman on right. vacation right. after we had finished working on the book. And I wore my bathing suit on the beach in Oman in front of people because of the book. And, you know, right. it would have been really stupid not to wear my bathing suit and not to enjoy that beautiful beach on the Persian Gulf. I know I went to vacation to the Persian Gulf. That sounds weird, but it was really great. You had to walk the walk and you worked hard to earn that vacation. I did work. I did work hard to earn that vacation. That is true. <laughs> so, yeah, that was great working on that book together. Well, Natasha, I want to thank you so much for joining me today on your third Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast. My pleasure. Let's set up number four. That's right. So thanks for listening today to the podcast. I'm Amy Newmark with Natasha Stoinoff. Have a great Memorial Day weekend if you're in the States. We'll be back Tuesday with a story that contains some good advice for you if you're starting to lose your passion for your job. We'll learn how one woman fashioned her own sabbatical by working as a barista at Starbucks until she was ready to go back to her real career. And this weekend, if you're looking for some good, positive journalism, check out our subsidiary, aplus.com, for articles and videos that will educate you about what's going on in the world and also restore your faith in people.